Hello everyone, welcome back and thank you once again for tuning in. Um, in last time's video I mentioned that my new guitar had arrived, my vintage jazz bass. Um, here it is in a kind of triangular box here. Um, so I'm going to open that on the film and hopefully we'll get to have a look at it and even more hopefully hear what it sounds like. Um, I'm doing this, once again, I am shamelessly plagiarising the advice of my good friend Gary, who as an experienced guitar seller and buyer um, is involved in packaging an awful lot with them. And when he sells one, he has very high standards in how he packages anything that he is selling so that it's as solid and as secure as it can be. And when it arrives where it's meant to be going, uh, it will arrive in the condition that it left him in. And equally, of course, when he gets one back in the other way, he expects the same. And he is effusive in his praise when he records himself opening one of his arrivals and he uploads it onto his channel, The Foxy's Guitar Show. Do give it a watch. I think he was up unboxing one the other night, actually, as I remember. Uh, when he gets one, he films himself, uploads the thing, talks about the packaging, talks about the guitar. But and this is where the sound advice comes in. Whether he is going to upload the video to his channel or not, he will always film himself undoing the boxing. And the reason for that is in the unlikely event of there being anything uh, wrong with the instrument, then he has the proof on film that it was there and didn't happen after he'd opened it. And I think that really is an excellent piece of advice, to be honest, and one I'm certainly going to take on board. This is the first time I've done anything like this ever, and I it wouldn't even have occurred to me to do it. So I, I really do think it's a wonderful piece of advice and probably something we can do with more or less everything really it doesn't have to be a guitar does it but i think it's i think it's an excellent idea so i'm definitely going to do it i still have my my existing squire here um i'm going to get that out of the way and make a bit of room for this one and i'm going to open it on screen and while i'm opening it i will tell you the story of how i came to have it <laughs> and hopefully the story, the end of the story, will coincide with the guitar emerging from the box. Uh, if it doesn't, we could be in for some rather long and awkward silences. So if I'm not looking at the camera all the time, do please bear with me, because I'm trying to get as much of this on screen as I can all the while. Um, when I got the idea that I was going to get a new guitar. I've been playing the Squire for three years or more. Uh, going back to the uh, the previous film, I set my budget and um, I had about £400 to spend and I did the work, did the overtime at work to get the, uh, to get the money and I started choosing. And me being me, and not knowing anything very much different, of course, the first thing I did was went into eBay. And then I thought to myself, what on earth are you going into eBay for when you could actually, you've got more to spend. Whenever I was going into eBay, I was spending, I was looking at guitars in the range of 100 to 250, 100 to 200 pounds, something like that. And um, suddenly, I was I was really upping my upping my budget and able to look up to four hundred pounds. And if I was doing that, then why was I buying a second hand one? Um, and I was talking to Gary about that, and he said, "Well, have you actually seen any other guitars?" No, of course I hadn't. So he said, right, you need to get yourself out to a music shop and have a, have a look at a few. Um, again, sound advice. And something I would recommend that you do, to be honest, uh, 
if you've not, the music shop itself is a wonderful opportunity. If, you, if you've never held a guitar before, believe it or not, that actually is a really big step. Um, to just have the thing over your shoulder, feel the weight of it, feel what it's like to get your fingers around the fretboard. And going to a music shop offers that opportunity, of course. And I, uh, I found one that I like the look of within range. And I went with uh, three specific guitars in mind that if you go in, they'll plug them in for you and you can have a play in the shop and see what you think. And I went there to have a play on three that they said they had in stock. One, I'm a bit of a sucker for a gloss black finish on the body. And all three of these were that. Uh, the first one was an Epiphone, um, which if you remember yesterday, I was talking about being the subsidiary of a Gibson. And then after that, uh, this was an Epiphone EB3. And very nice it was too. Then there was also a Squire, but not the P-based type that I've got here. It was called a Squire Jaguar. And I've always liked the look of a Jaguar and the sound of them as well. My old tutor used to play one very, very nice, sleek thing. And uh, I was quite happy to, uh, to have a look at one of those as well. And the third sort was a vintage, but it was a precision bass um, based on the excellent band Big Country. Their bass player, Tony Butler, used to play a vintage precision and he endorsed this particular instrument and they had one of those as well. Uh, unfortunately, when I got there, they didn't have the vintage in stock, so I only got to play the Epiphone and the Jaguar, and the Epiphone was running favorite out of the two. And I was pretty happy that that was gonna be it, really. Um, had I... Had they had it in black on the day, I may well have bought it there and then, but they only had a cherry red one, so I left it alone. And in that time, I, I kept looking, and I found one um, called a Subray, uh, which is a subsidiary of the Ernie Ball make. Subray 4, gloss black again, and loved it. And to be honest, it went ahead of the Epiphone as running favourite because I'd started to notice in the on the horns of a standard P, most of them look pretty much like that, maybe even slightly longer. The Epiphone, the EB3, had a very short horn, pair of horns, uniform shape, very rounded. And I suppose when you when you're spending 300 pounds, you want everything to be right, don't you? And there was something in the back of my mind I didn't like about that appearance. And a bit, <laughs> uh, just a cosmetic thing, but it was playing on my mind. And I preferred the look of the Subray 4. And that really took over his favorite. And I did all the research on that one and the prices. And while I'm on that subject, do shop around when you're um, buying something because there are some good bargains to find out there and a bit of a variation in price and you can save yourself 10 20 30 quid quite easily by trying a few different places i found the subray for between 340 to 360 i think something like that which was great and again had i gone with my convictions i'd have probably bought it by now and then, unfortunately, before I did that, I saw this one. And right from the word go, I just fell in love with the look of it. And although I tried to persuade myself that it, I'd already seen the one that I wanted, I couldn't <laughs> because this one kept staring me in the face and going, ah, and I just bought it uh, last week. And here it is today. 
and I am now getting it out of the box. And the first thing to note is that it has come in its own case, which is rather helpful. Uh, so I do have a case that fits my my precision. Um, so here I am now opening. There's a thing. There's a certificate of authenticity there for a vintage. Um, the particular make of this vintage is a, a VJ74. I'm guessing that stands for Vintage Jazz, which is what the make of it is. And there are quite a few types of VJ74 around. This particular one is a 25th anniversary model. And it's the only one I've seen that had the particular finish that I absolutely fell in love with. And that was, here we go, we are open. <laughs> that was this rather splendid, it's gloss black on the rim, but the back and the front has that rather beautiful, what's called a sunburst finish where it fades out a colour into another colour and the colour it fades out to is silver. And the look of that has always blown me away and it is continuing to do so and I absolutely love the look of it and uh, I am very pleased that I have bought it. And just had an experimental twang of the strings there and it, uh, it sounds roughly in tune so I think we may just be able to get a, get a bit of racket out of this before I, before I sign off. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this label, just excuse me one second. Right, and don't need that either. Smash it. Right, I've got my lead from my other one. Take that out. The lead on this one is helpfully in more or less exactly the same place on the, on the front of the machine there. So that's plugged in. Amp switched on. volume up and here we go my first note on an EB on my uh, on my vintage and I like the sound of that very much indeed might need a bit of tuning up I think but uh, overall that's uh, that is lovely very pleased with this um, I think this one's gone on long enough to be honest so I'm going to come back another time and we'll start playing this thing properly and I'll go into some notes and uh, probably I'll still have the square when I do it so I'll try and compare the two and just show you the difference in look and tone and playability. Um, so I'll just say thank you very much for watching this rather haphazard uh, event tonight and my apologies for it being a bit all over the place and I'll hope to see you soon. Stay safe for now folks and bye.